Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Todd Fonts, and this is Con 251 Materials Testing and Processing. I'm going to do a quick little uh, overview of what to expect this semester. Um, so hang on. Uh, we're going to start with a little background on me and uh, where I come from. I got a bachelor's degree from University of Colorado Boulder in civil engineering, uh, and then I worked as a structural engineer for about five years. Uh, what I was mainly involved with was concrete work, and in particular holding concrete uh, in places it cures. So that's either forming, which means you're, you're developing the walls. So this picture down here is an example of handset forming. Uh, so what I would do as an engineer would be design these systems, do takeoffs. Um, we actually had crews that would assemble it and things like that. Um, but that's, that's the walls. Now if you want to support the ceiling, that's called shoring, concrete shoring. This would be an example of a shoring system on the right hand side. It's called flying table where you, uh, you land this structure uh, on a level. You pour your concrete, let the concrete cure, drop the table down, wheel it out, bring it up to the next level and repeat the process until you get your building complete. So that's an example of shoring. I would develop these types of systems. This is just one type of system, but Flying tables are fun. Um, I also designed access scaffolding, so scaffolding for high rises around the, uh, more like the Denver area more than anything else, but all throughout Colorado. And um, to design these stair towers, and this is just, you know, access to get to the outside of the building to put on the fascia and whatever else you might have to do during the construction process. So that's what I did for about five years before deciding I wanted to teach. Um, I actually taught a class at Arapahoe Community College, got really excited by it and went back to school and got a master's in education uh, and ended up teaching high school. So I taught physics and chemistry at a place called Alexander Dawson School in Lafayette, Colorado. Um, I did that for four years, but it, you know, I was teaching physics and I'm more like, you know, construction, engineering related, so it didn't feel quite right and wanted to teach at a higher level. So I went back to school here at uh, Colorado State and I got a PhD in engineering education. Um, I, Finished that and then took a position in Norfolk, Virginia at Old Dominion University uh, where I was teaching industrial technology and technology education. Uh, and then um, it was okay, but it wasn't really construction and engineering. It was this, this uh, industrial, you know, more like, um, I don't know, manufacturing processes and things. And it's not really my bag, you know. So I accepted a position at Ohio University. Um, where I was teaching civil mechanical engineering. I did that uh, for five years and um, oh, and this was, I got my PhD. I left Colorado 10 years ago after I got my PhD and I've been trying to get here ever since. So after 10 years, a position finally opened up at Colorado State last, uh, last fall. I applied and I got it. And here we are. So uh, this is my Actually, it says my first semester. It's actually, my second semester at uh, at CSU. So, still, still getting the hang of things. Uh, but great to be back in the in the in the state of Colorado. So, so that's me. I would love to hear more about you. Um, that's the unfortunate thing about this class is that, you know, with COVID, anyways, uh, I don't get to meet everyone and hang out with you and get to know you. So hopefully during the lab sessions, we'll, we'll have that opportunity. Of course, that's not going to happen right away. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, it may be virtual or not virtual office hours, uh, but uh, we'll do what we can do. Let's talk a little bit about the class, Con 251. Uh, title is Material Testing and Processing. Um, basically what this class is about is looking at the properties of materials and it also has a lab component. So the, the things that we look at are the strength based on how material is loaded. You've probably, you know, maybe familiar with some of this stuff, but if I had like a, a member, I could pull it, that's called tension. I can push it, that's called compression, right? I could also shear it. A shearing would be like, sometimes scissors are called shears, as like a karate chop or, or two opposite forces separated by a slight distance. I could torque it. So if you're familiar with cars and drive shafts and torque, it's like this type of force. I could bend it. So this is like what a beam usually feels is like this bending, you know, another type of force. Or I could buckle it where if I put a force straight down, instead of just compression, it actually uh, deforms sideways. So in this class, we're going to look at each one of those types of loading scenarios and see how it affects 
uh, the material, you know, how, how much is it going to deflect and how much force can it take before it breaks. Um, and that is very dependent on how the forces are applied to that material, but it's also dependent on what it's made out of. I think we, we'd all agree that, uh, that steel would be much stronger than this foam, right? So, uh, so the other thing we're going to look at is strength of, um, based on the material strength, is it made out of wood, metal, concrete, things like that, right? Um, some of you may be taking uh, structures, CON 358, this semester. Some of you may be taking it next semester. Uh, we're going to cover some of the same material. There's actually some overlap here. So hopefully it'll be a really good class to either get you prepped for uh, 358 in the future, or if you're taking it now, it'll be more reinforcement because you'll be hearing some of the same concepts uh, for material strength. They're both based on materials. Difference is what this class is the fundamental properties of materials. That class is how do we design a structure based on those material strengths, right, and how they're loaded. So that's that's a little bit about overview of the class on a, on a large scale. Um, how to find stuff within the course. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Canvas by now. Uh, my Canvas, pull it up here. Um, well, you know, it looks like many others. Uh, the, the main place you're going to be looking, and I don't have this totally all published yet because I'm recording this video before this class is actually live, but we can still take a look at it because it's still there. It just isn't published, right? So the, the main place that you're going to want to go, I suppose you could start at the home page, but there's not much there, right? It does say start here, which just brings you to modules anyways. But this is the main place you want to be are the modules. We have course information. I'll tell you, well, this is where this video is in this course intro, right? Um, and some other information. This idea of lab groups we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but we're going to be in two different lab groups, group A and group B. Uh, and then it, it's broken down by weeks. And each week we'll have a topic for our lecture, lecture part of the lab. And we'll have a lab component. Well, the first week we don't actually have lab just because it's Martin Luther King, I guess. I don't know. Traditionally, we haven't had a lab the first week. So you can see the first one, Intro to Materials, Lecture for the second week, Mechanical Behavior. And you could click on any of these, well, once they're, they're live. Um, and what I'll provide you are the PowerPoint notes. If you just want to read through notes, or I have the video, you could look at the video. Now, these videos, I have use YouTube as the platform. Um, so if you were to click on one of these, you can kind of see what I do. Now I'm using OneNote, so it means it looks like I'm, uh, let me fast forward here. It looks like I'm actually writing on the board or something, but what I'm doing is writing on this. I try and keep the video shorter. This one's like 20 minutes long. And, um, and like I said, it's on YouTube, but the links really are found on Canvas. And in fact, I believe you can actually watch it right here on Canvas without, without actually leaving Canvas, right? It's just embedded in there. So you could watch it that way as well. You can fast forward, pause it, whatever you want to do. You can make it full screen, you know, whatever else. So, uh, but like I said, the key is this modules link. That's where you're going to find most everything. Of course, there's other stuff like grades and assignments when we get there, but it'll all be linked through modules, meaning once we do a lab, um, you'll have something like the, the uh, actual lab document will be found there as well. So that's a, a little bit about where you can find things. If you wanted to, uh, you could go to the YouTube channel directly. I don't know why you'd really need to do this, but I think the main reason you'd want to do this, uh, by the way, if you do go to this channel, I, you want to go to the playlist because I have a lot of classes on here. I have, this is our, our class 251, but also I have 151 which I'm teaching. I've taught statics. I have, cl I, have, I have lectures there. I have strength and materials. I have dynamics. A lot of different classes on here. This one though, so make sure you're at the right playlist. Um, but one reason you might want to watch this is because I do put them in order and you could work ahead if you wanted and watch all the videos for the class, right? So... If you're really that gung-ho, you can, you can work ahead before they're officially published. Sometimes I might change one or two things in the video, but um, I don't know. We'll have to see. So, so that's the YouTube channel, uh, and that's Canvas, a little brief tour of Canvas. I think most people are familiar with where to find things on Canvas, just to make sure you are. Um, that's where everything's going to be posted. Just follow along week by week. I'll send out notifications uh, when any new information is needed. So let's move on to the syllabus. 
I uh, started with the contact information. There's me again, my name, Dr. Fonts. Everyone mispronounces it, says Fance or France or Fantez, I don't know. But So I put it phonetically. It's like Fonts, like the computer font, F-O-N-T-S. Uh, my office is 107A Guggenheim. It's kind of hard to get to because it's like, if you've been in Guggenheim, there's classrooms. One of the classrooms is 107. You'd have to go to the back of 107, the very back of the classroom, and there's a little door. I'm through that door. Um, so, of course, there's a class in session. You couldn't get there, right? So what I've been telling people is the easier way is to go to the other door, which is from the outside. So this is like, this is a picture of the backside of Guggenheim looking from the oval. This little, little red oval here, this little red circle, that's my door. So if you just came up to this door, that's my office. My desk is right behind this window. This whole thing is like one big room right here, and that's where my desk is. Um, so you could uh, you could walk up to that door during office hours. I hope to be I hope to be there a lot of times, but we'll have to see with COVID and and what they allow us and don't allow us to do and things like that. But uh, office hours where I'm always going to be available, not necessarily there, but always on um, uh, Microsoft Teams. I'll have it open and available, 10 to 11:30 Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now anytime you can always contact me. Shoot me an email. I'm probably available almost any time, or shoot me a message on Teams. Either way, uh, if you want to shoot me an email, there's my email, todd.fonts at uh, colostate.e. Oh, there's a typo right there. This should say uh, .edu. There you go. That's better. todd.fonts at colostate.edu. Um, our textbook, uh, soft cover, looks like this. Fundamentals, Materials, and Science by uh, Materials Science for Technologists uh, by, I think you pronounce it, Hrath, um, third edition. Uh, there's the ISBN number, you can buy it anywhere, and the one, you can get previous editions, anything else, I can already tell you that um, it, isn't, it isn't like what I cover in class is exactly what's in the textbook and vice versa. The important stuff I'm going to cover in the lectures and the videos, that's the important, I mean, the, the important information. There is some auxiliary reading that you could do, you could get more information, deeper information, but... Um, Honestly, I'd say the book is almost um, uh, optional at this point. Uh, as far as grading for the class, it's heavily lab-based. 50% of your grade will be on the lab projects that you submit. 10% uh, on quizzes. There'll be a weekly quiz. 20% on exams. There's two midterm exams. And 20% on a final exam. It uh, brings up to 100, right? Standard grading scale. We don't use minuses or pluses in construction management for whatever reason, so just A, B, C, D, F. So like I said, that 10% of quizzes, there's a quiz every week we have material. I kind of do that just to make sure you understand what's going on with the material. You know, it keeps you motivated to do it. Uh, that means there's actually 12 quizzes, but only 10 will count towards your final grade, meaning you can bomb two of them, you can skip two of them, Two of the 12 aren't going to count, so just your top 10 scores for your quizzes. Uh, they'll be posted every Friday morning, hopefully by the time you wake up, and they'll be due Sunday by midnight, so uh, don't forget to do that. It'll be all through uh, Canvas, if you've ever done a Canvas quiz. Um, you know, it's, it's just right integrated into the, the architecture. You'll know your score right away and, and all that kind of stuff, right? There is no time limit, and it's uh, multiple choice, not so much fill in the blank because those are hard to write, but I am um, actually have a, a grader who's writing the quizzes, so we'll have to see what they actually come out like. They are open notes, open book, but you're not, you should not be going to the internet and just Googling answers. You shouldn't be phoning a friend, anything like that, right? No collaboration. It's more, um, you know, just whatever we cover in class, but it's not a memorization class. It should be, can you do the work with everything in front of you with no time limit. Uh, now, the exams are similar. The big difference on the exams is that there is a time limit. Well, let's start at the top, though. Dates are posted on the syllabus. We'll look at the syllabus in just a second, but uh, we have, like I said, two midterms, so get those on your calendar, whatever you need to do to make sure. It's going to be open for a couple days, meaning um, on the syllabus, it might be uh, like say on week eight. Well, it'll probably open up on like a Wednesday morning and be open till Friday night. So you have Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. You can start it whenever you want, but once you start taking the exam, you have 50 minutes to complete the exam. So that one, there is a timed component. It's a big difference between exams and quizzes. Uh, it's the exact same format as quizzes. It's also multiple choice. Um, also open note, open book. Also no internet, no neighbors, no friends. 
Um, but yeah, so that's the exams. Lab groups. Uh, labs in here, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, but um, as far as what labs we're doing when. But as far as the labs in general, because of COVID, I need to keep smaller group sizes. We also have a limited number of, of lab stations, so it actually makes it a little better. But we'll be broken into two groups, group A and group B. Um, and group A will meet some weeks and group B will meet some weeks. And you'll see on the syllabus when group A is meeting and when group B is meeting. So you'll have some weeks that you don't meet in lab and other weeks you do, right? And, and all this is listed on, um, on Canvas and on the syllabus for lab sections and when they are meeting. So lab groups listed on Canvas under course information module. Why don't I pull that up? So if we were to go back to the uh, to the Canvas page under modules and lab groups, um, what you'll see is an Excel document. Pull up that Excel document and you end up with something like this. So first off, you have to know which group you're in, which lab section you're signed up for. Is it the Wednesday at 11, Wednesday at 2, Thursday at 10, or Thursday at 12, right? And then after you find out which group or you know which group you're in, then you can find your name hopefully in either group A or group B. If you're not in group A or group B, shoot me an email, let me know. Uh, they're just in alphabetical order. I didn't really have any rhyme or reason to put people in certain groups. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so take a minute, make sure you can find your name, make a note on where you are, which lab group. So if we look at the lab schedule, these are all the weeks that we have labs and um, well, all the labs up to week 14 because after week 14 we don't actually, it's like the last week we don't have a lab. Um, the first week we don't have a lab, uh, MLK week. So second week we have a measurement lab. It's basically, you know, how to use a tape measure, how to use calipers or what do the little marks mean, things like that. It should be review, but some instruments, some it may be been a while, or you know, which mark really is a sixteenth of an inch on a tape measure? Could you find it? Things like that. So uh, that's lab one, and that's just going to be virtual video. So I'll have a little introduction about it. I'll have pictures of the me the, the items being measured since we can't meet these first three weeks because of this COVID stuff, right? The second week, same idea, it's virtual. It's a tensile test. It's a, there's a steel specimen that'll be in this testing machine. I'll have a video on it. I'll give you data. You have to do the lab report based on the data. The third, or actually the fourth week, we have lab three. Uh, this is where we're finally in person again. The first people will be here are the people in group A that week. Uh, so the Wednesdays and Thursday, whatever lab you're in, if you're in group A, you're showing up on that fourth week, that week of starting 2-8, right? And that lab will be looking at heat treatment and how uh, hardness of steel changes with that. And then the same lab happens again a week later with group B. Um, then we come up to exam number one. So the week we have an exam, we aren't going to meet for lab. Then we're going to uh, create our concrete because concrete takes 28 days to get to full maturity or close to full maturity, 98% of full maturity. So we're going to pour our concrete and we're going to test it much later, you know, these uh, weeks 11 and 12. But um, so you can see what we're doing here. And then we have this threaded fasteners that's using bricks. And uh, if you've ever used like an anchor, or like a concrete anchor, it's like that, only it's in masonry, it's in a brick. So, uh, so yeah, so there you can see a breakdown of all these week 13, 14. Well, also after spring break, once again, we are back to virtual because the university is not having students come back. Uh, I shouldn't have to say this, but if you feel at all bad or cruddy or whatever, just stay home. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the nice thing about this AB is if you don't feel well, just come the week after with the other group or come, you know, or you can make it up. I can give it to you virtually. You know, there's, there's many options that we can work around if you don't feel well. Um, no reason for you to come to class at all. And there'll be no penalties at all for missing class. So for the first six weeks, uh, this is what our schedule looks like. We've already talked about the labs. The only difference between this slide and this other slide is I have uh, what chapters, this is loosely on chapters, meaning, um, like I said, it's more important to watch the videos and look at the PowerPoint slides. Quizzes, of course, at the end of each week, so make sure you, you are following along with that. And then exam one at week six. Hard to be, we're already talking about exam one, I haven't started classes yet, but. So that's the beginning. So what you should do for homework from this point forward, go into under Canvas week one um, under the modules and go ahead and watch that video under week one. I think it was intro to materials. 
Um, Readish, chapter one in the text. It's going to go into a lot more chemistry than you probably need to know, but maybe you're really interested in that. Uh, and then don't forget to take quiz one by Sunday night, which is 124. So that's what I got. Um, let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you have issues with scheduling or anything like that. And I look forward to uh, getting on with it. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.